We get to jump into a special kind of lighting now called image-based lighting, or as it's often referred to, IBL. It is a unique light in the fact that it doesn't behave like any of the other lights. Let's go ahead and make sure we've got that activated right now. I'm going to come up to Lights, IBL Light. Now I renamed that, and we see it show up in the scene, and it is different because it's kind of like the best way to get your head around it is that it is like creating an entire world of light around you. In the same way that the indirect light or the infinite light projects the same direction of light all the time like the sun does, IBL lighting is based on a sphere and goes ahead and shines light into it. The easiest way to show you that is to go ahead and open up the advanced materials property, and we'll be looking at this more with some of the other lights. We know that we can change the light color over here and the strength of the light. But we, what we don't see, and I've got the opposing camera set, as I move this around, the IBL light is not showing up as something we can normally see and manipulate because it just doesn't work that way. I'm going to come down to the bottom tab in the Properties palette right here where it says Advanced Material Properties and click on this. The lights, just like anything else, work with materials. You can adjust the colors in here and do some special types of light blending but you can see that there is a texture map loaded in. And then you can see that it's plugged into the color channel, the diffuse channel, just like when we're working with materials and objects. So what we've got going on is this bright type of image that's being toned down by the color here to create some natural ambiance. Now, to make this show up, ray tracing has to be turned on in the render settings. So let's do a quick little render just to see what this looks like right now. It'll think about it for a second. And we'll get something that actually looks a little bit strange. It's doing the subsurface scattering for the skin on the character right now. The one thing that IBL lighting does tremendously well is that it helps cast reflections on everything. Since you have an entire environment, and this looks like a funny picture, but it's bent around a sphere and then flattened out into a square is the reason we're getting these funny little distortions. And it's also an interior shot. It's not, an, well, I guess it is actually an exterior shot now that I'm looking at it. But it's unusual, but does provide for very nice types of reflections. So if we want to actually use it as a light source, we need to go into our render settings. And we have to engage indirect light. While reflective surfaces are picking up the texture map, it's not actually casting any light yet. So when we turn that on, we get some indirect light that's going on. And we have the ability to adjust both how many times the computer goes over and processes and reprocesses the light for believability, and then just the quality of it here. So I'm going to leave it at the defaults right now, but we'll come in later and start working with it. And let's go ahead and say render now. Additionally, ray tracing always has to be on. That was on, so I didn't point that out. But we're seeing light sampling taking place right now, where the program is calculating the rays of the light coming off the light sphere, or sometimes called a probe and starting to cast this kind of gentle light across the scene. When you open up Poser and it puts four lights in the scene, one of them is an IBL light, and in fact, it's this one right here. If we wanted to have more of a daylight cast to this, then we would go ahead and turn this color here to something more like white. Now it's the regular color of the light itself. If we go ahead and render the scene right now, keyboard shortcut Command R or Control R if you're on the PC, we're getting much brighter deposition of light onto the surfaces right now as it finishes its little calculation right here. The way you'll use it in a scene, unless it is a remarkable outdoor scene, is to go ahead and combine it with another light that would be warmer. In this case, we've got just the thing. If we happen to come over to, let's go back to our pose room. My layout's resetting. That's interesting. Back in our pose room here, if I go ahead and right click, well, actually, I can just come up here and choose a light. Let's come down to light. In this case, let's come down to sun. And I had it turned off. Let's go ahead and turn that back on. Now, I do have the ray trace preview right here. So let me go ahead and click refresh so we can see what's going on. Thinks about it for a second. And then we get this one particular view, and that's fine, but it's not true to the actual IBL lighting. Let's go ahead and pull this away and do a quick render. Let me activate the main camera window right here and choose render. This time in a little larger format, we'll see this taking place, all the little red dots again, the individual rays that the program's keeping track of. 
there we get a pretty bright light in the scene that has some indirect lighting qualities to it. It's not pitch black under the car like when we were just using the sunlight alone. And it just creates a much more believable, realistic type of environment. In our next movie, we'll start looking at some special effects that we can use with these individual lights to go ahead and continue to create this ambiance.